All right, it's a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful day. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so grateful that you're here today. I thank you for taking your time to be here, to get all dolled up, amen, and to go through the potential rain and storms. But we're here together to hear the word of the Lord. And I want to just say this in the beginning, that this is a, a, an eye-opening word. It's a very powerful word, but it's a warning uh, that I believe that needs to be taken heed. I believe people need to wake up and listen to what is being said. Uh, one of the problems with the American mindset is we believe through disconnect that this does not apply to me. Uh, again, prophecy doesn't apply to me because, one, that's Israel, that's over there. Number two, I'm out of here. Well, I have to help you and tell you that, number one, it's not just about Israel, though the center, center of prophecy is, it's about what's happening to the earth and the world. The other aspect is, you ain't out of here. Come on, somebody. I mean, some people would like to be out of here already, but you're not. And therefore, you have a journey in front of you. So I've got good news, and I've got hard news. How's that? Here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, America, you've been invaded, not only by foreign entities bound to destroy you, but you have been invaded by my great army. You're infested. No poison, magic trick, or potion is strong enough to destroy my purpose. My purpose, you ask? It's very clear and simple. Return unto me what is mine. Like Belshazzar, if you don't know about Belshazzar, you need to go to Daniel chapter 5, the last king of Babylon, by the way. Like Belshazzar, you have paraded my stolen goods and filled my precious vessels with vile elixirs and have made a mockery of what is holy. My great army will not relent until your defenses are weak. Your fight has fainted and you give into what is right. I am coming to your nation with a sword. I will not relent until you repent. Return unto me, my vessels, seek peace, pursue holiness, and my favor will shine upon you. Refuse these warnings, and wave after wave of the canker worm will invade your nation. Heavenly Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to help me say what I cannot say to do what I cannot do. I know it's only by your power, Father God, that anything supernatural is ever achieved. And I thank you for that power now and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Everybody, everywhere. The title of this message is called The Invasion of the Canker Worm. The Invasion of the Canker Worm. And I just want to begin by letting you know what a canker worm is. A canker worm, by definition, according to the Bible, is locusts. It's actually the licking lo locusts, meaning that they devour everything. They destroy everything in their path. In fact, locusts, according to New Testament an Old Testament commentary not only destroyed the fields and made them white and barren and took off the bark of trees, they actually invaded homes and destroyed the wood inside the house, including furniture. They were that devouring. They were that powerful. They were that destructive. And I believe in my open statements this morning that America is being bitten and infested by the canker worm because of our sin. That God is allowing the bites and the pieces and the parcels of life, these particles of life, if you will, that seem just to be eating away at us, maybe seem small to some and large to others. It's continuously happening in our nation. There's a reason for this. There's a reason that we're seeing every institution in our country crumbling. There's a reason why it is being moth-eaten, if you will, or it is being destroyed by termites. There's a reason. The very foundations of our nation are shot out. They're gone. 
We have nothing to stand upon but Christ, and he is the solid foundation, the rock of ages. But we have found ourselves moving so far away from that true foundation that we have made a facade. We've made something fabricated out of the minds of men and pagan gods that we can no longer stand upon firm ground. It's shaking ground. It's sinking ground sand because if you build upon anything else but Christ, it is a house that's built on foolishness. Come on, somebody. And when the shaking comes and the winds blow and the sea rises and the waves crash, that house will fall and how great that fall will be. And so America has found itself in the condition and the circumstance of watching decade after decade, administration after administration, uh, all these things uh, that are coming into our country. We've watched the very decay and the destruction of it like locusts. And so there is an invasion, and God has allowed it. I just want to be clear today and make no mistake about it. God has allowed it. This is happening by God's watchful eye. Now, some will get mad at me and curse me and write all kinds of things about me, but it is the truth no matter what. The devil is still God's devil. God still uses evil for good. I wish somebody would help me. He still allows these things, and he's still sovereign. He's still in control. And because he's sovereign, he's, but he's, he's, because he's in control, he has boundaries for the enemy. In other words, the enemy, like a junkyard dog put on a chain, can only go so far. Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad? I remember when I used to cut corners and go through people's yards, and I'd see that dog and say, row, row. Uh oh. But next thing I know, snap that dog got caught by that chain, and you go, <laughs> come on, somebody. Uh, sometimes life is that way. But God, nonetheless, has that dog chained up. Is anybody here? But He allows it to be. God is a loving God. We're going to get into all this in just a minute. He's a loving God, but he wants to bring his people into correction. He's trying to bring the church into correction, into the bosom of his love and of his grace, but we have wandered far away like Israel has. And the only way to bring us back is to allow the luxuries of life to be eaten, if you will, by locusts, to be bitten by the locusts, to be destroyed by the locusts. So all we have left is Christ. Sometimes you got to lose it all to gain it all. I wish somebody would help me. And so this morning we're going to talk about the invasion of the canker worm. I want you to go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Is anybody there? Joel chapter 2. Let's go there together. We're talking about... Now, I want you to understand something in perspective, theologically and eschatological. There is the understanding of the day of the Lord. We understand that. The day of the Lord is the appearing of Christ, the parousia. It's a time when Jesus returns with his army and destroys the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon. Come on, somebody, and, and shuts that thing up for about a 1,000 years and reigns and rules and with a rod of iron. We know that. We understand that. But what you need to understand that before there's a day, there's a season. I wish somebody had me. There's a season before the day because people get so pinpointed and say, well, this is speaking of the day of the Lord. Honey, you need to understand something. There is a day, but there's a season before that day. There is Christmas day, but there's Christmas season. Come on now. There is a holiday, but there's a season of holidays. There's a time frame of precursors that are just a setup for the big show up of what God is going to do. And so in that light of teaching and preaching this morning, I want you to see that we are in the very beginnings of the seasons of the day of the Lord. Though I understand we're not there, thank God, we still got some road ahead of us. But I must recognize and I must realize that I am headed into that day. And what I'm witnessing today is a part of the seasons of God. There are the birth pangs. There are the times of Jacob's trouble. There are times of great perplexity that lead to the very day of the judgment of God. Are we clear together? And so I understand that. But just remember this. Remember this. 
prophecy never just springs up. I said prophecy never springs up or it wouldn't be prophecy. Prophecy prophesies, it declares and decrees what is to be. And there's a time frame from the moment it's spoken out of the mouth of a prophet, now the heart of God, to existence. There is a season. How long that season is, we don't know. It took several thousand years for the prophetic word of Jesus to appear. Come on, somebody. And we're looking at a several thousand years to this time, and we're waiting on Jesus to appear again. So prophecy doesn't just spring up. And this is the problem with the American mindset, the microwave church of America. We want everything to happen right now and because pastor so-and-so or prophet so-and-so preaches something and it hasn't come to pass in a decade, we just turn our backs on it and say it doesn't apply to us. You cannot put that on your resume. It does not apply. Was that DNA or something we used to put or DA doesn't apply in the application when they had questions about you? No, you can't do that on prophecy. I'll give you a chance to get to Joel chapter 2. I know you've never been there before, but let me help you. Look at y'all honorary this morning. Verse 1, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Watch what he says here. Blow the trumpet in Zion, not your gazoo. That's the problem with most church folks. They play in the gazoo. Do, 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 do. Come on, somebody. Just got the little gazoo because they're on this little parade. No, he said blow the trumpet. Trumpets for big people. He said blow the trumpet where? In Zion. Who blows it? You. What is the significance of blowing the trumpets? To have a band? No. To blow the trumpet is a call to warfare. And I'm here to tell you this morning, we are at war. If you don't recognize and realize what's happening in our country and our lives and our family and what's happening in the world, I don't know what to tell you, but we're at war. And if your preacher is promising you a rose garden, he's a liar. Your rose garden is in the midst of the war where the thorns are. God will be with you in the midst of your trouble, but if you're looking for a utopia, you're in the wrong place. Even if they said it's in Waco. Oh, I wish I had somebody to help me. To all my Texas friends, I love you. Blow you. Blow you. The, some of y'all get that. Some are like, what are you talking about? You just got to listen. Blow you the trumpet. Blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. Where? In my holy mountain. So first of all, it is a sound of war, but it's a sound of warning. It's a sound of war, and it's a sound of judgment. We should be right now in this United States of America playing that trumpet sound of war and warning, not for the decay of our country and to revive it by some political process, but we should recognize and realize that if we don't invade our schools with prayer, if we don't reach out to the parts of our world and institution and our nation that needs Christ, including the church, we're going to find people that are going to split hell wide open. We're going to find people, even preachers, that aren't going to make it to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Is anybody here today? And that we must roll up our sleeves and get our bayonets ready, if you will, and go into the darkest parts of our community and the darkest parts of this world and preach the blessed truth of the light of the love of Christ to every single person. And that ain't just me with a microphone and shiny hair. Come on, somebody, that's you. I said, that's you. Everybody looks at the preacher and say, you go do it. No, you go do it. My job is to feed you and beat you. I mean, uh, feed you. Come on, somebody. My job is to help you, correct you, corral you, bring you into guidelines and bring you into encouragement. Your job is to go get sheep just like you. Go clone yourself. Come on now. It's not my job looking at the preacher. That's why so many preachers quit. Do you know the day... Monday is the day that most preachers give up and quit? Yes, it is. I've talked to many preachers. I talked to a preacher that was in a mega church, big old church. He said, man, I'm going to quit. 
Why? It's Monday. I'm going to quit. He had enough of the sheep on Sunday biting them. Sheep hurt, man. Watch this. Blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. We've got to make this call to the church. It starts right here. Where does the warfare start? It starts right here. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about some nationalistic view that we're going to raise up arms and take back this country. How'd that work out a little while back? Didn't do too good. And this latest rally and latest call is not going to work out either, folks. It's time to put the garbage away, time to put the toys away, and let's get serious about soul winning, serious about preaching the gospel, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, and raising the dead. It's time to put away the gazoo and blow the trumpet in Zion. Come on, church. Come on, preachers that are listening to me right now. Blow the trumpet. Tell people of what's happening. Quit telling them you're getting out of here. Quit lying to people. Quit deceiving people. Tell them the truth. I don't know about you. I like truth tellers. I want to hear the truth. Watch this. Watch this. Blow the alarm. Sound the alarm. Get it out where? In my holy mountains. Say, Pastor, well, I don't like war. I don't want to hear all this war stuff. I come to church to hear it. Every time I leave there, I need Tylenol. I need Advil. Every, every time my husband plays you on the radio, I get like a Pepto. I just get sick. The reason why is you don't read the Bible. The reason why is you are with Pastor Cupcake and you're listening to all this, come on, some gluten-free messages, this organic messages is a bunch of garbage, has no protein in it, no meat to it, baby, and you're listening to this tribe that isn't helping you any. By listening to raw truth, you become strong in the power of the Lord and you can face your enemies every single day. You know the enemy wants to kill you, then get up and kill him first. Get up and slay him with the the word of God. Get up and fight the good fight of faith instead of getting trampled on and beat up every day. We don't want war. We don't war. Can I help you out real quick? You don't have time to go there, but Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, you ought to read it sometime. Read it not in the King James. Read it in the, re- in the original text, the way it's supposed to be translated. It basically says this, until the end, there will be wars. Read it. Read it. Read it. There's always going to be war. Well, Israel and Iran and what's happening, it's always going to be. This is why I don't sit there and focus on YouTube and all this latest breaking news. A missile just, I get all that. I'm sorry about it and I don't want it to happen. But I'm not going to freak out because it's not the end yet. There will always be war until Christ comes. Get that in your spirit. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be in this little bubble, little puff bubble of Christianity where no one bothers you. Now, I'm not saying you can't have good days and God's with you. Of course he is. But we have so many people that just want this, this cotton candy type of life to just float around like the boy in the bubble. Some of y'all don't even know my, don't even remember the movie. The little boy in the ball. We just want to bounce around, man. We just want to be immune to warfare. But if you're going to name the name of Christ, you're going to be in warfare. If you're going to love God, the devil's going to try to steal, kill, and destroy from you. You might as well get up and swing first. So how do you swing first? Get up and pray. Get up and praise. Get up and read. Get up and declare. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, and I will be glad at it. Well, I don't feel like it. So what? You talk to any, any athlete, any world-class athlete, they didn't like getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. They didn't like exercising. Come on, why is the church so lazy? Oh, I feel good today. I already told you I loved you, but why are we so lazy? Listen, honey, you're going to retire when you get to heaven. You're going to rest when you get to heaven. Let's work now. Let's fight. Watch this now. Now I got your attention. So, so there's always going to be, and, well, I don't know about Daniel. I didn't really trust Daniel. How about Jesus, Matthew chapter 24? Wars and rumors of war. How's that? You're going to wake up tomorrow. There's going to be some type of calamity somewhere. Somebody's going to shoot somebody. There's going to be some nation against another nation. That's part of prophecy. Get over it. Quit focusing on it. 
and let's preach this thing. Watch this. Watch. Blow the uh, trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Are you here? The inhabitants of the land tremble. They tremble. And that's what we're missing today is the fear of the Lord. I said the fear of the Lord. That's why we preach the way we preach and say what God says to say so that there will be fear of the Lord in the house of God. I don't want you to fear him like you scared of him, but I want you to reverence him, respect him, and love him. And if you sin, get it right. It's that easy. I said it's that easy. Instead of being stiff-necked and rebellious about everything and throwing your tail up in the air and your tail feathers at God, go to him, bow down before him, and say, God, forgive me. I have sinned. I've wronged my brother. I've thought wrong. I did wrong. I spoke wrong. I am wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But we don't do that today in today's church because we're already saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and God's already forgiven me for every sin I've ever committed. You better read the Bible again. You better utter your confessions to God. I didn't say go get you a priest. I said go to the high priest, and he will help you get things right. But we don't want to do that because we got it all together, especially the American church. For the day of the Lord cometh. Now watch this. He says, sound the alarm, blow the trumpet. Why? Because the day of the Lord is coming. We don't have this yet in the church. This fear is not here yet. This reverence is not in the body. It's in this house. It's in certain houses. It's in certain churches. But for the totality of our nation, uh uh-uh. No, no, no. You can tell it by the flamboyancy. You can tell it by the ignorance and arrogance. You can tell it by the fashion show and parade of men's flesh that stinketh that goes on in the house of God. If we truly knew that the day of the Lord was coming, we'd be tearful and we would be fearful of it. We would cry out to God, God, have mercy in the midst of judgment. You think things like that that happened in Mississippi are just, a, uh, just an accident, the, uh, the weather event? Listen to me now. God is a good God. But what a man sows, he reaps. If you sow into the wind, you get the whirlwind. God, I guarantee you, was in the midst of it all, protecting and providing, but he was also letting the enemy do what he does. He's still God, and he's still sovereign. That's a theology that Americans don't understand about God. You need to read the Bible. He is sovereign over all. The devil does not have the reign that most people think. The inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Who's saying this? This is, this is Joel. He's prophesying thousands of years ago that the day is nigh. Why is he saying that? He's saying it because the time of the Lord will be like a thief in the night. It will be so fast you won't even know what hits you. But through prophecy, we watch this now. By prophecy, we have warning. We have an early warning system. You want an AWACS plane? There you go. That's the Bible. He'll give you an early warning. He's telling us through prophecy, these things are coming. But yet the church gets freaked out when you hear it on the news. And you say, oh, my God, the sky is falling. Listen, you know what's the truth. You get on there. I'm telling you, I can't stand YouTube sometimes. But you get on these particular programs, and they're repeating things the Bible already said and causing people to be in a frantic and a frenzy and start taking money out of the bank, do all these different things when you're supposed to already know the deal. And if you already know the deal, then you can be at peace. Listen, fear comes because you don't know. Fear, does, fear comes because it's of the unknown. But if you knew what's happening, you'd have perfect peace that passes all understanding. So read your Bible and you'll have peace that passes all understanding. Instead of getting on that stupid device and freaking out over everything. I don't give those people the time of day. Like my daddy used to say, you don't rent no space in my head. You ever heard that before? I was like, I don't. In other words, you ain't in my mind. I'm not, I'm not going to be mindful of you. Watch this. We're only in verse 2. we got a long way to go. 
a day of sunflowers and shiny skies and Skittles for everybody. And I got to get a better translation. A day of darkness and gloominess. I hate you, Pastor. I didn't say it. We tell you what the word says and then people write you and get all mad at you. But the day of the Lord is coming. It's not going to be a bright, beautiful day. It's going to be hell on earth in the coming days. Now watch this. Someone said, well, that doesn't pertain to me. I'm going to show you where it doesn't pertain to you, but I will show you where it does pertain to you. In other words, it rains on the just and the unjust. If I'm at war and I'm on the front lines, there's a bullet going to go by me, I promise you. Or you ain't on the front line. I'm going to see a casualty, and if I don't see casualty, I'm at the chow hall in the back of the line. Come on, somebody. And that's our mindset. We don't want warfare. Honey, I don't want warfare either, but I'm in it, so what do I do? Fight. I said, I got to fight. Watch, watch, watch. Now I'm getting your attention. I love it. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people. Watch this. So what happened? He's given you a prophetic process here. Watch the process. He said, blow the trumpet. There's, there's war. There's warning. Did he say that? That's what he said. And then he said, there's coming a time of darkness. As that darkness happens, like the spreading of the morning upon the mountains, then there comes what? A great people and strong. So in a time of darkness, there'll be a time of attack. There'll be a time of invasion. There'll be a time of spiritual decline and deterioration. I wish somebody helped me. Now, there's so many ways I can go with this. Are we talking about a foreign true entity? Yes. Natural entities? Yes. I believe so in the coming days. But something much worse than that is supernatural. Because natural, I can control. I can shoot my enemy if an enemy's coming against me from a foreign entity, a foreign country, a foreign land, but I can't kill that which is spirit. And I don't have the ability in my natural warfare to stop them. Your little double odd ain't going to do nothing. It'd be like a little pop gun. Watch this. As the morning spread upon the mountains of great people and strong, there has not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even of the years of many generations. So Joel is prophesying by the very mouth of God that there's coming a time that will be great darkness. And when great darkness comes, there's an evasion with it. Like never before. Let's explain it. Verse 3. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. What does that mean? Here it is. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. In other words, I'm going to show you a picture of before and after. It was what? The land of the Garden of Eden. Beautiful, luxur- luxurious, and uh, luscious fruit, and a great garden. Watch this. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Here's your before and after. In other words, that when God allows this thing to fully manifest, now watch, it is God doing this. When he allows this great army, strong army, to begin to manifest itself, that which was once beautiful will become rotten. Why did he let it happen in the first place? Because of sin. Not because he's a destroyer, he's a restorer. But he destroys your enemies, and he destroys those who are in opposition to him. He's not helping me. And so you see that it was once the garden. Can I tell you and bring to your remembrance that America once used to be the fruited lands or used to be like the Garden of Eden? There was no time like the American time. There was no time of great prosperity like America. You can go back in the history book. Some of you are too young to know it, but go talk to somebody with a little bit of gray on their head. Speak to those that have been through the Great Depression, those who have been through the Great Wars, and find out how, how wonderful a time it was to come out of these wars and see prosperity in America and see homes being built dotted across this nation and industries built up and mom-and-pop stores and farmers were flourishing. Come on, somebody. And things were good. Everybody had a chicken in the pot. 
and a caddy out front just about if you wanted one. Things were good. Credit was flowing nice. You could afford things. But it's turned into hell. I said it's turned into hell. And if you want to argue that, we will let you argue with yourself out in the front yard. That will be a sight to see, wouldn't it? And so he says, this fire devours, and then it says, and nothing shall escape them. How much? Nothing. So he's going into detail in a minute about this great army. The appearance of them is as the appearance of the horses and as horsemen, and so shall they run. May I help you and remind you to go to Revelation chapter 9 when you have time and read of the locusts that will come? These are not locusts, natural locusts. These are supernatural beings. I'm not going to get into that now, but... Just know this, they work for God. I said they work for God, no different than those that are working for God right now that are destroying this country. And that's not a political statement because they're all wrong. I said they're all wrong. And it's time the church stops playing politics and get into the prophetic reality and follow Christ and his kingdom who is our only king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. I almost said so. I just, I just need to move on because I'm not even really past my introduction. The appearance of them is that the appearance of horses and horsemen, so they shall run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, they shall leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth a stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Listen to this. They're set in battle array, and you can't stop them. Before the face of the people shall be much pain. Don't sound like no party. Don't sound like it, whoop, whoop, 1999. Don't sound like none of that does it. And all the faces shall uh, gather blackness, and they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like the men of war. Listen to what he's describing to you. Listen to me. I'm trying to give you a prophetic overlay of what's happening in our nation now and what will literally transpire in Revelation chapter 9 and other parts of the end times. But we will see it and are witnessing it now. This is why we cannot elect somebody to fix this. Hear me good, church. There's no way to elect somebody and fix this. There's no way to have legislation to fix this. There's no way that we can write this into law. We must have our hearts broken before an almighty God. But his enemies are going to be used against us. That's what you're watching. You're watching America decay. And it's not a problem with the Republicans. It's not a problem with the, the Democrats. It's not a po- problem with the independents or those who don't know who they are. It's a problem with the human heart. I've never read anything in there about politics, have you? I've never read anything about the end times that the Democrats or the Republicans, but we in American church use that as our pawn, as the excuse, as our game that we play. Honey, it's time to put that stuff down. If you can't see what's happening in our country on both sides, you're just ignorant. I'm sorry, I love you, but you need psychological therapy. Shock therapy, maybe, lithium, I don't know what you need. But you need some time out, honey doll, and you need to hear the word of God. Now, I'm I'm not making fun of people that got some issues. I'm just trying to bring out some clarity here. You've got serious problems if you think man is going to fix this hellhole of life. Is that okay for you? See, you have to talk that way because people don't get it. What what does he mean? Well, let me be clear. It's a hellhole. Let me give you scripture. Any man that turns his back, any nation that turns his back shall be turned into hell. You reject God, that's what it becomes. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but you know the facts. Just wish some preachers would say it instead of being a, you know, come on now. I can't go to a church like that. You better tell me some stuff. Get up in my grill. Now watch it. I got good news, so just loosen up, okay? <laughs> Somebody, I'm hanging in there. Okay, hang in there. Watch this. They shall all tighten up, man. They shall run like, give me some good news. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Listen, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So you're looking for a reprieve? You're in the wrong generation. You're looking for a break? You're in the wrong place. They ain't going to break their ranks. 
They are unified. Listen to what it says. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. Can I tell you something? The divine and determined purpose of God will be performed. I'm going to say that again. The divine purpose of God, it will be performed. It's determined, and you can't stop it. I can't stop it. We can't stop it. No prayers can stop it. We can be protected. We can be provided for, and we will. But we can't stop the unlocked wheels of time. They're moving faster than you could imagine. We're almost at the end of March, y'all. I said, do you hear me? I said, we're almost at the end of March. We're in springtime. Winter done past. Time to get busy. And just look at some of y'all just had a, had a birthday. You're getting old. The divine determined purpose. I said that real fast. Not looking stage left or is that stage right and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded there it is this enemy this entity that is coming that is here on the earth today they're not going to be wounded well we'll just blow them with a nuke Mm -hmm. you can't even kill roaches with a nuke how you going to kill these things flow Help me now. The only thing you can kill that kills a roach is a heel. <laughs> Squash that thing bad. I don't know about you. I don't know we're getting on this, but some roaches today, man, you spray stuff on them. They go, what was that? Oh, that's good. They're like, that's Febreze, and they get bigger. If you don't believe in evolution, there's something there to those guys. They're evolving into some, like, demons. Come on, I'm only making you happy for a reason. And they fall upon them. They're not going to be wounded. Well, we're going to stop this. We're going to change this in 24. By gosh. March, come on, Christian. All the way to Washington. You're silly. You, you're about, you look as silly as I do up here. You ain't marching up to Washington to change nothing. You're not. And I've been preaching this thing for a long time, just hoping I can wake somebody else up somewhere to say, look, man, put down your musket, take off your Davy Crockett hat. Do you look stupid in any ways? Come on now. Pick up the cross. Put down the flag. Oh, you can love your country. You can be patriotic. You can sing all these different things. Whatever. Okay, great. But put Christ first and his kingdom first and read the Bible. That's all I'm looking for. And get the same passion and tenacity and fire to bring the gospel to the world as you do to bring someone to Washington. I wish I had somebody to help me now. I get tired of all the energy and the money and the suckers in the house of God who say they're Christians just blowing money. And you won't even help build houses and for widows or do anything. But you're going to uh, see, I just, let me go back here. I just, it's amazing to me. And I, I'm only, I'm just being nice. We've got a visitor here. I'm just being nice. Just watch this. Verse 9. And they shall run to and fro in the city. Whose city? Your city. And they shall run upon the wall. They're already there. And they shall climb up in the houses. They're in the houses. I said they're in the houses. You better be glad I don't make house calls. Oh, I'm about to run around here. Old preacher's knock on the door without telling you he's coming. Y'all remember that day? I remember that day. I remember not being saved. And who came? Baptists. I love my Baptist brothers and sisters, but they came to visit me. They knew I was a sinner. Help me. You know how they had a little fireman have the safe a tot? You know, the little sign to let everybody know there's a tot. There's a toddler in the house in case of an emergency. That was my house. They, they knew a sinner lived there. I don't know if it was the beer cans out front or what it was, but the, the pack of marbles, but they knew. And there was a dog that lived in that house. And they went there. Nobody else went there. Jehovah Witness didn't even want to go there. But my brothers in the Baptist church, they came looking for me. Yeah. And I did everything I could not to answer the door, but they knew I was behind that door. I'm telling you a true story. And the person that was with me, I hit him in the bathroom. 
Yes. And they said, can we go to the bathroom? I said, it don't work. <laughs> How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I was a liar. My pants were on fire. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm glad them baddest people left, but they, they shared Jesus with me. But I said, hey, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> you hear? Yeah. yeah pay, y'all just let me have, let me come to your house. I'm going to come on and now just show up. Me and my whole family, all five of us. <laughs> Woo! Right around supper time. That'd be a good time to come. Uh, we'll see what it's like in your house. Amen. But you know, old preachers used to do that. They may probably still do around here. You better call me. I got a gate for a reason. I live in a gated community, by the way. I got it from Tractor Supply. <laughs> uh, you, you better honk. Come on now. You better honk. I'm out in the woods, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, Mark. I'm out in the woods, you know. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, somebody better help me. But to come upon the houses, watch this, to enter in the windows like a thief. I'm not going to do that. Watch, watch, verse 10. And the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble. This is huge now. Come on back to reality. This is huge. The earth and the heaven are going to be moved by these entities that what? Work for God. Why do you think earth is shaking? Why do you think we're having the turmoil and the problems and the troubles and the chaos and the crisis we're having both here and what's happening in the earth today in the, in the heavens? Why do you think? It's because we're coming to the day of the Lord. Again, prophecy doesn't spring up. It takes time and there's a season of it. But the problem with the church is we're cobbletos and we don't know the seasons because our preachers won't tell us the season because they're telling us we're out of here and it's a season to fly, fly, fly away. I'm here to tell you it's not. You're here to work, 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 work. Preach, 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 preach and fight, 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 fight. I would love to go away, but we ain't going anywhere. We got work to do. I, see, I, talk, they, I, I just don't like this guy. It's okay. I love you. What if you're wrong? I'll see you there. I'll just see you there. But, but if I'm right, you're in trouble. You're in big time trouble. You ain't ready and you're going to be the first one freaking out. Watch this, watch this. I got to go. The earth shall, tri- shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. We know that's coming. And the Lord shall utter his voice before whose army? What does it say? Thank you. Thank you. Now you're not so mad at me. Put down your switchblade. Before his army. It's his army. Here's the thing about it. We, we get so messed up, and I'm talking to you YouTubers out there. I'm talking to you all that freak out all the time. You're more worried about DARPA. You're more worried about uh, uh, General Dynamics. You're worried about Textron. Come on, somebody. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Elon, Bill Gates. Help me, somebody. Transhuman AI. Transfigures. Come on. You're more worried about those things when I just read to you the most dreadful army that will be upon the face of the earth that is God's army. Now, I understand these are precursors and they will be utilized and used. I got that. I did get a couple degrees in life. But I recognize and I realize that when God is control, when God releases his spirit, when he releases these things, there's no stopping them. And so I'm not going to focus on these creations of men, which I understand that they will be used diabolically. I am putting my fear and I'm putting my trust in God Almighty. I ain't worried about some dog that moves around like a robot and shoot people. Somebody here and drones and all this 
stuff. I get it. Please don't write to me and say, you just don't know what's happening, Pastor. I get it. But I ain't focusing on that. I'm focusing on this. I'm focused on God Almighty. Watch this. We better start fearing him. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and terrible, and who can abide in it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, churn you even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Do you hear what he's saying? How do you, how do you avoid this, Pastor? How do we act in such a time like this right here? Return to God. I said, get the sin out of your life. Get the leaven out of your life. Get the uncleanliness out of your life. Get the unrighteousness out of your life. Return back to him. Not just in I'm sorry, but in weeping. In true repentance. Come on, we're giving you good news here. Why should we do that? He says, watch, verse 13. And rend your heart and not your garments. He don't want no show. Come on now, most folks that get up and, and they come to the altar, I mean, most churches, it's show. I don't care if people come to this altar. I want to see what you're like down at Walmart. Because how you act at Walmart will tell me what happened down here at the altar is real. Anybody can rend their garments and say, oh, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. <laughs> But can you walk the walk? Can you talk the talk? Can you do what you're supposed to do? And can the church disciple you and not let you go on your own? There's another problem. I ain't got time to open that can. Mothers in the church, God, grab hold of the younger women. Fathers in the church, grab hold of the young men. Teach, train, disciple, lead by example. That, that's a whole other message. Watch. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. Turn unto the Lord your God. For why? He is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger. Sure don't sound like it. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's why the day of the Lord didn't happen yesterday. And it ain't going to happen today. And it ain't going to happen tomorrow. But it's coming. Why? Because he's gracious, merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repented him of evil. That's my God right there. I said, that's the God I know. You, you hear about the doom and gloom God. That ain't my God. My God is good. My God is wonderful. My God is a healer. My God is a savior. My God is a deliverer. And my God is a judge. He's my friend, but he's my father. Mm, somebody help me. He's my counselor. He teaches, he leads, he guides, and he corrects, and he bears not the rod in vain. Well, see, we don't, we don't teach that. No, we, don't. we got grandpa up in heaven playing checkers at, at, at the Cracker Barrel of heaven. That's what we got. That's what American church has, just God up there doting over his little ones. No, he loves you with a very amazing, everlasting love, but he will whoop up on you if you're wrong. I said, he'll try to draw you with his love. He'll bring preachers and people in your life. He'll bring scriptures into your life. He'll do everything he can to draw you towards him. But if you don't listen to him, he will use that rod. And thank God for the rod. I've had it. And if you haven't had it, come on, we'll tell you all about it. I got testimonies. Nothing, nothing of the correction of God is enjoyable until it's over. Watch this. I got I to gotta go. I got to go. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 14, who knoweth that he will turn to repent? You don't know. I said, you don't know if he'll turn to repent to who? You, to leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, a drink offering unto the Lord your God. What should we do, pastor? You ready for this? Here's a question I wrote him up. What should we do, pastor? I'm scared. I'm confused. Here you go. You ready? I'm glad you asked. Verse 15, blow your trumpet in Zion. <laughs> What are you talking about? The first trumpet was a trumpet of war. This is a trumpet of what? Humility and repentance. You want to know what the church should be doing right now? And that's how I know we're not near revival as we should be. I thank God for outpourings and things that are happening. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm with it. I'm always thankful when I hear what God is doing in certain sectors of the world and society. But the total wholesale outpouring of what God wants to do is not going to happen until you see this. Are you ready? Blow that trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. 
What does that mean? Set aside some things in your life. It's not just going on a diet, Jenny. Jenny Craig. It's not just shedding off a few pounds that you put, well, many pounds that you put on during winter. It's not pushing your plate back from the buffet, though that would all be good for all of us. Getting out of the trough once in a while and breathing and <laughs> would be good. Plowing instead of grazing would be helpful to the farmer. <laughs> But he's talking about restraining yourself from certain things of your life. Not all of them are bad. Obviously, the vices of life you should stay with. Do we have to go through elementary teaching now? Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't eat bugs and don't eat bats. <laughs> Y'all don't even know veggie tales. No, I'm not going to do that because they, so that's, what, that's what holiness preachers want to do is tell you how to live. I'm not telling you how to live. You ought to know how to live. You've got a conscience. You've got a Holy Ghost inside of you. You ought to read the Bible. That'll help you what you're supposed to do and not to do. You want to make a cake? Read the instructions. You want to live right? Read the instructions. It ain't that hard. It's just pretty easy. Somebody like me knows it. Thank you, Sister Sarah. I appreciate that. She was like, yes. If God can use you, brother, he can get through to anybody. Is that why you hide behind the camera over there? Watch this. <laughs> fast. Say fast. Again, it's not food. If it's food, fine. Fast some stuff in your life. Push away the table. Get back. Push the plate back. Do something that you used to do, that you love to do, and spend time in prayer. Watch this. Fast. Call a solemn assembly. We don't call a solemn assembly anymore in the house of God. It's a party, man. It's a party. We got the kazoos out, man. We're dancing. We got the pinatas out, man. We're, we're having a party. Gather the people. Watch this. Sanctify the congregation. I'm talking to preachers now. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those who suck the breast. In other words, get everybody. You got a breath, get in the house of God. You're a little toddler, get in here. Strap you in there. Well, they don't like all the noise. Get them in the house of God. Put them in that little buggy and give them a bottle and let's cry out to God. Come on. I would go to church, but they don't really have a good ministry for children. I'd go to church, but they don't have a really good youth ministry. I'd go to church. I'd go to... You go because you love God, man. You gather together because you hear that sound, and you recognize the day of the Lord is coming, and you cry out to God. Hold that little baby in your arm as you cry out to God. I've never seen such cowardice in the church. Well, that baby's going to bother this. You, you, he's going to bother the pastor. Not this one. I'll live out of that baby. You all know that. You brought babies in this house. I'll holler louder than that little thing could ever holler. I've done it. I've preached in, in foreign countries of the world where, they, where they, they breastfeed right in front of me getting saved. You can't unsee that. What do you do? You just keep preaching. <laughs> that baby don't know no difference. That baby's hungry. And that mama wants to get saved. Well, I ain't going to disconnect either one of them. One's crying and want to be dying. I'm not messing with that. Anybody here? You set one eye and preach. It's the truth. But we have all kinds of excuses. COVID, this, COVID, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Instead of just calling that assembly and saying, my God, forgive us of our sins. Well, I ain't never done, I ain't done nothing wrong. You're the first one I need up here. Because a true intercessor says this, God, don't apply this to your people. Father, move your hand off with judgment. Move your hand of mercy onto your people, God. Let it be on me. Through prayer and intercession, I intercede. Let, let that wrath come through me through what? Through weeping, through groaning, through intercession. That's when you know you're at the birth pangs of revival. That's it. 
not the total birth pangs of the world through prophecy, but when the church begins to cry out and say, God, have mercy. I don't see it. I don't see it, not not a whole cell. I don't see a no cell. Watch this. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast, the bridegroom to go forth from his chamber. Get out of there, boy. And the bride out of her closet. Can you get some air, please? The church needs you. In other words, the honeymoon got to stop sometime. I'm all about the honeymoon. I've been on the honeymoon for 28 long years. Someone catch that later. <laughs> long years. But so you gotta, sometimes you've got to come out and smell the sunshine. Sometimes you've got to come out and do some work. How many of y'all know when you first got married, you don't hang out in the hotel room? See, you just have to talk that way. Some people looking at me like they know what I'm talking about. Some people look at me, huh? You got to go get a job or that bride won't be there much longer. No, I, I just, I'm getting in trouble. Watch this. Watch this. Think, Ben, think, 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 think. Verse 17, watch this. Let the priests, the minister of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Who? The ministers, the priests. The pastors, that's you right there listening to me. Those that are watching, those that are hearing me right now, you're a pastor, you're a minister, you're a leader, even of a house group. You are the ones God's directing to weep between the porch and the altar. Okay, what do I do once I get there? Let them say, spare thy people. Did I not just tell you what intercession is? O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach that the heathen could rule over them or should roll over them, or rule over them, wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? In other words, God, show yourself strong that you are the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. Show yourself strong in this year, in this time frame of our generation, as you did to the children of Israel when they're under captivity of not only Pharaoh, but of Babylon. Show yourself strong. I don't see that. No, I see people wanting to put, again, some six-foot-plus, 300-pound person into the office of power and thinking that's going to be the answer politically to a sin-soaked situation. No, it is not. You might get some laws and you might get some lollipops, but you're not going to get change. I'm going to tell you something right now, and I've, I've got to bring this to a close. And I'm not closing by any means. I've I got, I got another few minutes. But, but listen, I'm just telling you straight up, if your preacher is still preaching to you that these are your best days and your best life and go get what you want and all these different things, you're in the wrong church. You need to run. That's all I can tell you. You need to run. Now, while I preach good things, yeah, I preach about God bless you, man. He wants to prosper you. But I add, it, I add the reality. He's prospering you so that you can win souls. He's prospering you so you can give it to the mission field. He, what you going to do with it in the coffin? Nothing. It's like a wishing well. It's just sitting right there. and you can't, you can't reach it. Someone else can go in there and grab it. I promise you, they, you ain't going to go down with that stuff in your wallet. <laughs> he he oh. watch this and like when he talks that way i don't care verse 18 then will the lord be jealous in his land when then after i pray after i seek him after i cry out yea the lord will answer and say unto his people behold i will send you corn and wine and oil and you shall be satisfied therewith and i will make no more a reproach among the heathen but I will remove far from you the northern army. This is about Ezekiel chapter 38. And will drive you, uh, drive him into the land barren and desolate and his face towards the sea in his B-U-T-T. -T. His hinder toward part towards the utmost sea. That's for some of you uneducated people. But he's going to put the hinder part, B-U-T-T. -T. Did I spell it right? I did. Someone with an education went, huh? Was that a code word? B-U-T-T. -T. What's the B-U-T-T? -T? No, God has a sense of humor. I'm going to turn their butts around. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. 
and his stink shall come up, and his Savior shall come up, uh, shall come up because he hath done great things. Watch verse 21. Fear not. Did you realize that the Bible declares in certain translations 365 times, fear not? And if you don't believe that, fear not and have no fear and be not afraid is mentioned over 500 times in the Bible. I think God's got your days covered. Quit fearing. Quit fearing and chewing your old fingernails off till you got nothing less left but nubs. O oh, land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, for the beasts of the field and the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the trees beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do bear her strength. Be glad, O you children of Zion, and rejoice the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former and the latter rain moderately. What is that? That's the flood. And he will cause you to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, and the first month. I'm telling you, folks, the flood of God's glory is coming to this world. I'm not going to have time to finish this, but you've got to understand, son, the day of Pentecost was just the first outpouring. There's another outpouring coming during the tribulation period, and there's a third outpouring that takes place during the millennial reign. Read, study. It's there. God's not done pouring out his spirit, and God's not finished pouring out his spirit in this nation, but he's not going to pour his spirit upon a bride that is dirty, but he will put it upon a church that has been prepared and made herself ready. The canker worms are here in this nation. They're infesting our country. My warning to you is to take heed to what God has to say. Take his word and begin to exterminate those things in your life. Don't let them destroy the very foundations that God has given you. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day to make it right. He loves you with an amazing love. And none of this judgment is reserved for you but you have been preserved to endure to the end, and God is with you. You've got to call upon the name of the Lord. Do it today. Those that are backslidden, those of you that go to these churches that are lukewarm, dried up by the roots, it's time to get right with God and find you a place to be planted, even if it's at your own home, worshiping God in spirit and truth. Father, bless your people. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you all. I'll see you Wednesday. Be blessed.